Good evening. Thank you for joining me tonight. I am Bill Bethle, lay leader for Calvary United Methodist Church in Stewart's Draft. And this is our Vesper prayer service. Each Tuesday night at 7.30, we join together for this simple sunset or evening prayer service. Evening prayer simply allows us to pause and give thanks for the day just passed and also make an evening sacrifice of praise to God. We have created our own form that we hope will work in this time of virtual gathering. We will begin with a short prayer, and then I'll lead a reading of a psalm, and I hope you will join me in the responses, which will appear in yellow on your screen. I will follow that with a very short homily, just a brief story, to allow you to consider your everyday walk with the God in you. And I'll end that with another prayer. Finally, we will say a good night prayer together. And I hope you will feel relaxed and thankful and be ready to start your nighttime rest. So let's begin. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you. As the moon rises to light the night sky. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Shepherd us, Lord, with your faithful hand and guide us gently into your land. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our responsive reading is coming from the book of Psalms tonight, Psalm number 67. Again, please join me for the responses. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make His face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere Him. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Tonight, we will read from one of Paul's letters to the church in Galatia, Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Now, before faith came, 
we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heir according to the promise. Apostle Paul is sometimes hard to follow, isn't he? Like trying to read a legal brief. And Paul is expecting us to be fluent in legalese and understand some basics so he can illuminate the deeper important things. For Paul, this stuff seems simple. And you know what? That deeper meaning Paul is telling us and telling the church in Galatia about is exactly that. It's simple if we believe. And it's the basis of our relationship with God. Paul is saying, this is how it was, which was good, this is how it is now, which is better, especially when you realize that it all comes as a gift from a loving God that wants us all in one family, God's family. The verse was, But before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law, confined for the faith. Paul explains living under Bible law in a positive light of having strict guidelines to protect us. God loves us so much that he created a fence, the law, to help protect us. Just like a herdsman using fences to protect his flock or his herd, the law was a mentor to guide the people of Israel as a way of preparing them for Christ. It gave a framework for moral behavior, and it lasted until God came into our physical world through Jesus. When God came into Christ, God changed the emphasis from salvation by merit to salvation by the grace of God through the faith of Jesus Christ. Verse 25, but now that faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor, for you are all children of God through the faith in Christ Jesus. We still respect the Jewish law and perhaps even revere it because we find great wisdom there but we no longer look to the law for our salvation. Instead, we turn in faith to Christ. God is a God of relationship. God wants a relationship with each of us, and God wants each of us to have a relationship with each other. Paul wants us to see that we are in a privileged and intimate relationship with God. He wants us to remember that when we see God in Jesus Christ, we become new people, redeemed people, forgiven people, people whose demeanor and actions reflect the fact that God has given them a new heart. We become one people. At our best, we see this unity in our churches. But at our worst, Christians are still seriously divided into ethnic and racial camps, political camps, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We get so stuck in doing what we want to do, how we want to do it, when we want to do it. That really rings true right now, doesn't it? We feel so independent that when fences are created for everyone's protection, we sometimes refuse to stay behind them. We get all uppity. It gets to be all about me. That is not the family God wants us to be a part of. Paul mentions some of the many divisions that separate people. Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free, male or female. But these are hardly the only major divisions that keep people apart. Others include rich versus poor, literate, versus illiterate, black versus brown versus white, socialist versus capitalist. The list goes on and on. 
And Paul is saying that in Christ, all of the barriers that divide one person from another person are rendered null and void. Jesus prayed that this might be true. In the 17th chapter of John, he prayed not only for his disciples of that day, but for those also who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, that they may be perfected into one. So now the Messiah has come and Paul tells us that Christians have become Abraham's seed and heirs according to promise. An heir is a person who has a legal right to inheritance. God has adopted us into God's family. And the word promise in the Greek really suggests a gift rather than something that a person can win by hard work. Being in God's family is a gift given without merit an act of grace, a free gift to salvation, something that God bestows on us rather than something we have earned. And you all thought the gift giving of Christmas was all over. Gracious God, it is easy to get overwhelmed with you and your gifts. When I think that you aren't keeping score and not holding things against me, I am amazed. You want so much to have a personal relationship with me that you came into this world physically through Jesus that we all might be saved and be a part of your family forever. In our world of it's all about me and my freedom, how can your grace ever be true? Fortunately, a wise theologian centuries ago told us that all we need to do is accept the gifts and believe. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Amen. Join me for our good night prayer. The words are on your screen. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may not know anything about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face those perils alone. Amen. Thank you for joining me. We'll be here on the Calvary United Methodist Church Facebook page again next Tuesday night, 730, for Vesper Prayers. And I hope we can all be together again then. Good night.